first question we have to answer is um, what is indeed uh, molecular diagnosis? Uh, after all, uh, molecular diagnosis is a branch of in vitro diagnosis uh, as opposed to in vivo diagnosis. As an example, uh, in vivo diagnosis is X-ray radiography or uh, nuclear magnetic resonance are good examples of uh, in vivo diagnosis. In vitro diagnosis is the search of specific molecules in biological fluids of patients. The typical, most frequently used biological fluid is indeed the blood. There are essentially, I would say, two types of in vitro diagnosis starting from blood. One starts for looking for proteins of a specific infectious agent or, as an example, molecular cancer cells. The second type of uh, in vitro diagnosis is indeed molecular diagnosis, which is the search for nucleic acids. Uh, so, in practice, molecular diagnosis means searching for nucleic acids of an infectious agent or nucleic acids of a cancer cell. So, we mentioned that uh, in vitro diagnosis is just looking for proteins or nucleic acids. And searching for proteins and nucleic acids requires different tools. Proteins can be detected in blood by monoclonal antibodies, whereas nucleic acids have to be detected by complementary nucleic acids which are labeled in order to be detected. Thus, in summary, uh, molecular diagnosis is all about detection of nucleic acids in biological fluids like blood. There are essentially three steps in molecular diagnosis. The first is extraction, the second is amplification of nucleic acids, and the third is detection of nucleic acids. This is our research center in which our scientists do develop new molecular diagnostic assays. I suggest to coincide together and to have a look how we do develop new molecular assays. As we mentioned, molecular diagnostics is all about detecting nucleic acids in cancer cells. In this lab, Ricardo and Elena are indeed isolating cancer cells from leukemia patients in order to identify certain specific genetic alterations in those cancer cells. Here Ricardo is examining some cancer cells in order to define uh, the morphology of those cancer cells and to decide how many cancer cells will be used in next experiments in order to identify and isolate nucleic acids. The identification of nucleic acids in cancer cells involves three critical steps. The most critical is indeed uh, maybe the amplification of nucleic acids, which is followed by a step termed detection. And those two steps uh, are preceded by an additional critical step, which is extraction of nucleic acids from cells. The most critical step uh, in nucleic acid detection in blood uh, is uh, termed amplification. Amplification is all uh, about a chemical reaction we perform in vitro in which starting from very small amount of nucleic acids we can generate millions of copies of the specific DNA we want to detect in that specific patient. The amplification technology most widely used in the world is termed PCR, which is polymerase chain reaction. When we decided to jump into this field of molecular diagnostic, we decided that it was essential for the company to be competitive, to identify and develop a new amplification technology, different and independent from PCR. That's why back in 2008, we identified the new technology termed LAMP, which we licensed in from a Japanese co company named uh, ICANN. Since then, we have been working around this technology, improving significantly the basic technology. Now, in our hands, the LAMP technology is clearly a competitive technology in detecting nucleic acids. 
and in our hands this technology is clearly superior to PCR in terms of sensitivity, specificity and time to results. After having identified an amplification technology, we took the second strategic decision to develop a fully automated instrument for the detection of lamp amplification products. This is indeed the prototype of this instrument we have developed with the Japanese company PSS, a leading company in instrumentation, automated instrumentation with nucleic acids. Thanks to this small instrument, automated instrument, we can detect up to eight different samples in parallel, making a molecular diagnosis in less than 30 minutes. This is a full working prototype, but we are looking for having the final definitive instrument ready for the market in a couple of months or so. I just mentioned the strategy of the company to deal with amplification and detection. However, there is a third critical step in molecular diagnosis, which is extraction. To acquire the know-how and the technologies required to be competitive and credible also in nucleic acid extraction, we recently decided to acquire a company specialized in nucleic acid extraction, which is Nordiag, based in Oslo, Norway. Thus, the strategic design here was to become competent and to acquire the know-how on all the three critical steps in molecular diagnosis. As far as amplification is concerned, we licensed in the LAMP technology and we improved a lot the basic technology. As far as detection of amplified products, we signed a co-development agreement with the Japanese company PSS and the instrument will be ready in a few months. Whereas for acquiring know-how and technologies dealing with nucleic acid extraction, we decided to acquire Nordiag. Now the company has inside technologies and know-how to be competitive and credible in the very competitive field of nucleic acid detection in biological fluids, which is indeed molecular diagnostics. So the company has taken the strategic decision to enter into the molecular diagnostic field. This is a very competitive field. So the obvious question might be why the company has decided to enter into this very competitive and difficult field. The strategic positioning which justifies the decision of the SORIN to jump into the very difficult and competitive field is to position our products to be very competitive in terms of low cost as compared to competitors and second to offer very high quality products which are very simple to be performed in any lab in the world.